Today I want to demonstrate a very simple example of how you can use Azure Data Factory's mapping data flow out of the box to do some more complex things around working with your file-based data in the data lake. And what I want to talk about today is a common action that you'll probably take when you're combining multiple files together that have some similar data and you need to join those together to make some sort of a federated data set. And what you want to do a lot of times is a fuzzy lookup. And the reason for that is because the nature of data within your data lake is that it is uh, sort of raw, unprocessed, kind of dirty data, not necessarily very cleansed data. So you can't always rely on very clean primary keys, foreign keys, and the sort of constructs that you have around constraints in database tables. So for this example, a very, you know, um, simple mocked example that I think will help you to be able to leverage this um, these capabilities in large environments. I've taken the movies database or the movies file, which is essentially a CSV file of the movies database, which has a movie ID, uh, the title of the movie, the genres, the year it was released, rating, and Rotten Tomato. Now, I, I when I I use this data set all the time with my demos of data flow, but I, I just I hate this column because it in the data set it is uh, misspelled as Rotan Tomato, Rotan Tomato. And so what I want to do is I want to get that out of there. I want to get the Rotten Tomato rating from another data set. So I have this version of the movie's database file, which is a Parquet file. So this is CSV, it's limited text, and this is Parquet. Of course, notice the difference is very delimited text. Everything is assumed to be string unless you um, ask Data Factory to detect the data type or you manually change these. Or you can always change those through expressions later on in your data flow with a drive column. Parquet file uh, is not only compressed in columnar but also includes the uh, schema. So it has the data type of the columns as well. So it's a little bit richer, plus it has some other fields in here I don't care about. It's got, I was doing, I was working on some dedupe with this Parquet file, so I've got these uh, these dedupe um, IDs. I have uh, some information about the action taken to update or delete a dupe. And I fixed Rotten Rotan Tomato and made it uh, Rotten Tom. So this is really what I want, is this column. So what I'm going to do is I have my two sources. Assuming that these are files sitting in your data lake and you want to have a federated data set at the end that you can sync and you can use later on somewhere else in your analytics. So what I do next is I'm going to prune those. I'm going to use a select transformation to pick out the columns that I want and rename those as well. On the top, on the CSV, I'm going to take out that rotan tomato, so now I'm very happy I don't have that ugly column there anymore. I'll leave all the names the same. So I did, I did, not, not, I did not do auto mapping, I'm doing manual, manual mapping here. And when you add mapping in this select, you'll have the option of fixed mapping, which is what these are, or rule-based mapping, where you can build patterns. We don't need patterns here, we're just going to do fixed mapping. And then at the bottom for the parquet file, I'm going to prune these as well with a select transformation. And the columns are going to be um, changed. I'm going to be only interested in the title, the Rotten Tomato, and the year. Now the reason why I want the title and the year together with that Rotten Tomato is because I need some way to match. Now again, coming back to that primary key and foreign key join within lake files. It's a little bit more complex because you just don't know what you're going to get sometimes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring in the title so that I can do a fuzzy lookup against. I'm going to use a soundex against the title and match that way. Assuming I don't have an ID. I, I do in this data set, but I took it out just to make it more difficult for myself. I'm including the year as well because I want to, um, I, I even if I, I match a title for a film, that film could have a similar or the same title in another year, so I'm using the year plus the title as my um, combo composite key. Now, you notice too that I renamed the columns title in year to title two and year two. Probably you'll, when you use this kind of functionality in ADF, you'll want better descriptive names than I just chose. Uh, title two, year two, not necessarily the best practice. And you don't even need to do this. Later on within the flow, you can reference these unique names via the stream name, which in this case, the stream name is up here, prune calls two at title and at year. I like this better. I think it's a little bit cleaner. Totally up to you. That's a preference thing. All right, now I've got my, um, I've curated the data sets in my lake and now I'm going to join them together. Now I don't have an exact match and I'm not going to rely on an exact match because I've, I made some differences in the data set. Actually, let me show you that right now. What I did was I took Faulty Towers as my demo for uh, this out of all the other um, movies and TV shows and whatnot in this data set. Uh, the original one is right here, and we use this all the time in our data set as a sort of um, a negative test. We use this as a way to show that you can clean data easily with data factory and data flows. 
the year is negative 1980, which is an invalid, and it also has this um, left paren 1975 in it, so it used to have the year in the title, and it's just some garbage data. So I copied it a bunch of times, and, and here I uh, gave it an actual year, a real a good year, good year, an actual real, real year, and then in these other two, I copied and pasted, and I took out the parens, and I also changed the spelling of faulty so that the, the um, pronunciation would be the same so that Soundex can also match on that. All right, so it's a little bit of a contrived demo, but just kind of getting across the concepts of how to do this. So the join is going to be on SoundX of the title from both of the um, incoming sources. Now, the way that you um, use a SoundX or any expression within the join is to, uh, say, compute a column. So let me uh, show you how you do that. So you say add another condition, and you click on compute a column. If you don't click on compute a column, then you're matching on exact columns. And every time you add another join condition within the join in data factory data flow, this is an and condition. If you need to do ors or more complex, use a cross join and build the entire um, join by hand. And you can use ors and combinations of ors and ands and whatnot. So SoundX title from the left hand side, which is the prune calls one or the top CSV. And then I'm going to do SoundX title two on the bottom, which is the parquet version of the data. And then I'm going to combine that with my direct match on year. Now I did um, an inline change of the data set of the data type here to integer. It might have been better for me to have done that through a drive column or just go here to the projection and change it to integer. But again, just showing you many different ways to solve the same problem. I did it in line with the computed column. Now this also means that year is not going to be an integer later on. Um, you'll see, I think later on, I probably should have changed it um, just one time. But anyway, that's just the way it goes. So matching on year two, so it has to be uh, the titles have to sound alike and from the same year. When you do that, I'm going to do a left outer join. The reason I'm doing left outer is because I want to take everything coming in. I want to take every movie title. And if there is a Rotten Tomato rating, I want to include that. But I don't want to exclude if there is no Rotten Tomato rating. I just want to have a null in there. Okay. Now I'm doing one more sort of cleansing of my data lake um, files, and that is with a filter. So the filter you can make as complex as you want. Mine is very simple, but I'm just uh, demonstrating things you can do. I am saying within these, this parentheses set here, I'm saying that the title to and the title have to be not null. So if there is something wrong with the data and it's null, I don't want it. It's garbage. Throw it out is what the filter is going to do. So that has to be condition one. The second condition is the year has to be a valid year. So I'm going to take out any of those bogus years like that negative 1980. So I just say greater than 1900. Those are the only, to me, the only valid uh, movies. And then when we're done, we go ahead and we see that. And I'm just seeking it to a folder. And you can see through my uh, data preview uh, what the data is going to look like. So we've got um, uh, title two. We have the Rotten Tomato rating. We have title. Uh, we have the movie ID, genre, the year. And the, the main thing is I got the Rotten Tomato included with my, uh, with my data set now. OK, so let's go ahead and run this and take a look at what that looks like. So what I do is I go to my pipeline. And I point to my, I put a data flow, um, execute data flow activity on my canvas. And I point to my fuzzy lookup, a data flow, and I execute this. I'm going to do a debug on that. And I actually ran this already. It takes a minute to run. So let me, uh, let me do this. Um, I will just go and show you the results of it. Actually, this will be really a lot simpler. So this is the incoming data. Now, at, when I uh, run this and I get the output results, I, you have to uh, run the data flow from that pipeline debug in order to get the data to write. We do not write the data until you run it from the pipeline. So I have to go up here to my output. Give me one second to scroll through. Output. And I put this into the folder called Others. And fuzzy look at that CSV. And you'll see that on the output, what it did was it was able to, let me wait for it to come up before I walk you through it. It was able to find all those. So you'll see here that um, Faulty Towers is the uh, actual name of the movie. And this came from the Parquet source, which has the um, Rotten Tomato in it. And Rotten Tomato rating was 54 for that movie. It matched on the year. It even matched um, on all three of those names because the SoundX was able to match it. So there's the one with the parenthesis. There is the one without it. And there is the one where it's misspelled. 
So that's the way that you can get around the, um, the, the lack of primary keys in Data Lake and some dirty data within your Data Lake. Hope you enjoyed it. See ya.